Hi, you're watching the Tropics Topics of Wednesday, July the 10th, 2019. We're currently monitoring what was previously known as Invest 92L has now been dubbed Potential Tropical Cyclone 2 by the National Hurricane Center, as this thing is going to be impacting land relatively soon, and tropical storm watches have been issued for portions of southeast Louisiana. It's been given a high near 100% chance of development within the next 48 hours, if not sooner. Currently has winds of 30 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,011 millibars moving towards the west-southwest at about 8 miles per hour. This thing is pretty much likely to become a tropical cyclone. It's pretty much a given at this point. It's not really a matter of if at this point, but when, honestly. This is the wide shot of the Atlantic right now. Here's PTC2 over here in the northern Gulf. Not much else going on in the Atlantic, just a pretty broad tropical wave here that was better defined closer towards the African coastline, but has since been trounced by Saharan air and no longer really is a threat to develop if it was ever. So let's just jump right into it and get into 92L, which has now been dubbed Potential Tropical Cyclone 2. You can see that the surface circulation here is still pretty broad. When I last spoke to you on Monday, this thing was still pretty broad when it was located over Georgia, has since dropped south and yesterday emerged into the Gulf and now is south of the Florida Panhandle. And you can see that there is, it's still relatively broad, but it has a lot more convection with it. On Monday, there was virtually no convection. Now today, there is clearly a lot of convection going on. And you can see here that a lot of it is based in the western part of the system over southeast Louisiana, for example, New Orleans had a lot of flash flooding issues this morning and is still having issues today, or right now rather, and is going to be just getting exacerbated as the system progresses up towards the west. The final rainfall totals for this thing is probably going to be very high, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Right now you can see it's still pretty broad and it's going to remain a little bit broad for the next 24 hours at least. And you can see that there's also a bit of decoupling going on here. You can see a little bit of rotation right here. This is the mid-level center. Right now, the low-level center is located somewhere up in here because this is where everything is rotating about the center of rotation right about here. And if you look at radar imagery here, this is just kind of a combination of radars selected all across the southeast U.S. and the Gulf Coast. And you can see that we have flow coming up towards north just off the Florida west coast. And you can see that flow is coming in, uh, moving towards the west just south of the panhandle. So we can discern two things from this. One, the center of rotation is right here. But the other thing we can discern is that we can't see it because it's just out of the radar view. And that's why there is an aircraft reconnaissance plane going in right now to investigate the system. It's flying in as I speak and should be in the system after this update is posted. And you can check up on what the reconnaissance plane has found there. It likely won't be finding a depression, but it will be finding something that's still pretty broad and decoupled. As we can see here on the sounding data, it's still pretty, it's not very well organized right now. And there is some shear in the atmosphere. You can see that there is some easterly flow coming in, excuse me, westerly flow coming in across the, uh, the lower parts of the troposphere, averaged out within this box. And there's a lot of easterly flow up here um, in towards the mid levels and even some northerly flow up here in the upper levels. So there's quite a bit of shear in this area. The flow isn't particularly strong, but because it is moving in different directions, that is a directional shear averages out to about 12 knots from 850 to 200 millibars throughout the troposphere here. And we can kind of see that a little bit better here on the water vapor imagery right here from uh, NASA. You can see that here's your, here's our system right here. And there's a couple of things we can notice. The first is that there's a weak little ridge right here centered just over northern Mississippi and eastern Arkansas. And that is what's causing this northerly shearing flow atop the system right now, which is pushing the mid-level center towards the south of where the uh, low-level center will be located. In addition, we can see that there's this kind of upper-level low located here over deep south Texas. That's what's kind of helping to initiate some of this convection, as it's a little bit of a baroclinic motion, but it's not subtropical in nature. This is going to progress off towards the west, and oh, this flow right here, this uh, easterly flow in the northern part of the system is going to allow for increased ridging over the Four Corners region, allowing for more clockwise rotation, and that will become key later on in the forecast. The other thing you may notice here is this little complex of thunderstorms here in eastern Kansas and into Missouri. This is associated with this upper trough up here moving into the Great Lakes, and this is what's forecast to eventually help pull the system towards the north as there's a little cold front that's extending from the system down off towards the south, and we can see that here on the European model. You can see that here's the trough right here. It's init it's initialized a little bit earlier, so this is from last night, not from right now. So we can see it's over the Dakotas right here, and then we have more ridging over the Great Lakes. But as we progress out into time right here, sorry about that. So if we progress out into time, you can see that it does progress along towards the towards the east, and then as a result, it kind of drapes this cold front farther to the south, but you can also notice that this ridging over here over the four corners is also becoming a lot stronger, and that's what's going to help pull 
uh, PTC2, or what at this point would be eventually a tropical cyclone, more than likely. And if it were to become a tropical cyclone, it would be named it would be named Barry. And this system would be pulled towards the west by this ridge. Now, this thing is going to kind of sit here. It's not going to move a whole lot. So as a result, this thing is just going to move, only move a little tad bit to the west. We can also notice here on this model that this trough right here, the front kind of extends farther towards the south. We can kind of see that better on the GFS here. You can see this area of dry air up here into Kansas and Missouri over in the plains. You can see how that kind of progresses towards the south. This is the back side of the cold front here, and this is up in the mid-levels. So it's not going to be as dry at the surface, but it's going to be this dry up in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Meanwhile, we can see here PTC2 down here south of New Orleans, and you can see that it's still a little decoupled here. You see the low-level center here is located offset to the northwest of where the mid-level center is, where you can see these wind barbs in here. Again, this is in the mid-level, so the winds are in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So this is going, or the troposphere, and this is going to be offset from this. And in the GFS, at least, it's a little weaker than some of these other ones. But we'll get to how intensity may impact track in just a bit. And you can continue to see that this front comes down, and then as a result, the GFS model it picks it up and curves off towards the north after intensifying it for a little bit. Now, the reason why it's being able to pick up, be picked up further to the north is because this front is going to have a lot of southwesterly flow on this side. And because the system is not as strong as some of the other models, which we'll get to in a second, it's feeling the flow of it more down at the surface because the frontal southwest flow is felt more at the surface than you would, say, at the upper levels of the troposphere. So as a result, the system turns towards the north sooner more closer towards Terrebonne Parish, just southwest of New Orleans, and then progresses off towards the north. And you can see all this moisture on the east side of the system. That's going to be producing all that really heavy rainfall that we're expecting, but again, more on that later. And then that progresses off towards the north and eventually fizzles out over Mississippi and into western Tennessee as we get into the weekend and into early next week as well. However, model says a European here, you can see it's, all, it's notably farther towards the west than the GFS model. You can see the GFS, this is the vortex initialization, you can see it's right here over Terrebonne Parish, while well, as the European is more over towards Cameron Parish, very close to the Texas-Louisiana border. This is going to mean a lot because you can notice here that, the, that there's more isobaric concentration right here. The pressure gradient is a lot steeper, meaning that the, that the European is a more intense system than is shown here on the GFS, which only has just a few isobars in here and not as many 50-knot wind barbs consolidated as you can see here on the European meaning that the GFS is weaker and therefore it does it feels the frontal flow more and curves off towards the north as a result. European being stronger, that means a stronger storm is going to extend higher up into the troposphere and therefore it's going to feel more of the effects from all layers of the troposphere rather than just the surface. And as a result, it continues off towards the west, but eventually we'll have to curve north. As we go back to the European model, we can see this ridge out here forming to the east of the Bahamas. That is going to force the storm to move towards the north, and it's going to be inevitable that it does have to curve north at this point, and then we'll move off towards the north up into the central plains and then off into the Midwest as a result. So a lot of kinks in this forecast here. So basically what's going to happen here is if this storm takes a little bit more time to consolidate, is a little larger, it's expected to be rather small, but if it's a little larger and it's not as intense, then expect it to curve north more closer towards New Orleans. If it waits a little bit longer and it's, uh, excuse me, if it's a little bit stronger and it doesn't waste as much time, then it could be a little bit closer to making landfall, say, near Port Arthur, or if in some scenarios, such as the UK Met model, closer towards Houston and Galveston, although that solution is a little less likely than something in central or western Louisiana at this point. Uh, we can see here on the model guidance here, most of them curve it pretty pretty easily towards the north, and some even take a little bit of a northwest jog as a result into Louisiana, but some of the stronger models, again, take it closer towards the Texas-Louisiana border, and that's something we have to watch out for. And then this is the intensity guidance here. You can see that those stronger models, same, similar colorations, they all take it towards closer to hurricane status. In fact, some models even show a pretty powerful hurricane not ruling that out, but I'm saying maybe, I mean, I, category one seems a decent bet, but anything higher than that, I think, is a little bit unlikely, uh, just based on climatology and the fact that it doesn't have a whole lot of time over water. But most of the models do keep it at tropical storm status and strong tropical storm at that. Uh, so, again, this is going to be something that we're going to have to monitor. It's still uncertain, so we're going to have to take a while to actually know what's going to happen because, again, the system right here is not very well organized, and once it does have a center circulation, and then once we do know what the system actually looks like in, say, 24 hours, 
then we're going to have a better idea of where the system's going, how strong it's going to be, and what the impacts themselves will be. Bottom line, anywhere from, say, the Texas, the Texas border from Houston all the way across Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, even into the Florida Panhandle, need to be watching this very, very closely here. Because, again, this thing is likely to move off towards the west and then curve north somewhere. Where that north northward curve occurs is going to be crucial. It could be as far east as New Orleans. It could even be as far west as Houston. We just don't know yet, and that's just because of the evolution of this trough right here, the front attached to it, the ridge over the four corners, and the ridge over the, the Bahamas. All these factors are playing to steer this system off towards the north, where it does so. Again, we just don't know. This is the National Hurricane Center forecast for the storm. Currently bringing it into west central Louisiana as an 85 mile per hour hurricane. You can see here tropical storm watches have been issued for southeast Louisiana. And you can see it's not expecting development until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, just south of uh, Mobile, Alabama. And then it's going to progress off towards Louisiana, make landfall sometime Saturday afternoon or evening, and then move inland across over towards Shreveport by Sunday and into Monday. But again, the main threat from the system by far is going to be rainfall and possibly very heavy rainfall at that. I mean, New Orleans has already gotten some pretty significant flash flooding and the system isn't even a tropical cyclone yet. So we can see here on the WPC forecast, a wide area of 10, possibly as many as 15 inches over here over Louisiana and even far inland, farther inland as well in the Mississippi and maybe even as far west as Alabama, far east as Alabama, depending on where the center makes landfall. Again, you see in the GFS, all of this moisture is based off towards the east on the system, and that's going to be where the heaviest rain occurs, near and east of where the landfall point is. Again, we just don't know where that landfall point is. So anywhere in this area from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, even as far west as maybe far eastern Texas, you need to be paying attention for the potential for potentially life-threatening flooding coming from the system. As, again, isolated totals. Could be as high as 15 as 20 to 20 inches. That could even be a little bit underestimated in some cases. It just depends on how quickly the storm moves because it's not forecast to move very slowly, as you saw. And again, this is going to be something that we're going to have to monitor. And if the system gets more intense, then we're also going to have to worry about wind damage and storm surge. Although wind is going to be a very minimal risk with this, assuming it doesn't get overly strong, which it shouldn't. And then storm surge as well is going to be something we're going to watch out for, especially along the Louisiana Gulf Coast. Again, this tropical storm watch right here is also associated with a storm surge watch just because the system could be a little bit stronger than forecast or a little bit weaker than forecast. We just don't know, and therefore, you need to remain vigilant and pay attention to the, local, your, the information from your local weather office and news outlets and everything that you can get, including here at Force 13. And you need to make sure you have your preparations ready just in case the system does decide to come your way and just in case something goes for the worst. Again, we're hoping for the best, but we're fearing the worst in some of these situations. So again, just pay attention to everything you're hearing and make sure that the news you're receiving is correct and not overhyped. And you can receive that again, your local National Weather Service office, local news outlets, or here at Force 13. Any of those three are going to be just fine for you, and you should make it through this just fine if you do listen to those three outlets right there. Okay, so that's basically it today for a tropical, or not the tropical depression, not yet, potential tropical cyclone two here out over the northern Gulf of Mexico, likely become a tropical depression or storm. Again, if it were to get named, it would get in the name Barry, and then progress off towards Louisiana more than likely, although, again, anywhere along the Gulf Coast um, from basically Panama City, east or west towards Houston and even beyond, you need, need to be paying very close attention to the system right here, as it could be a potentially life-threatening system in terms of flooding, and hopefully not in terms of storm surge if this thing gets too strong, which again, we won't know until a little bit later. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.